Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to the new studio. It's wholly redecorated and redone and I think it looks pretty good. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. So today we're going to take a look at note taking applications. I've been trying to find a good note taking app on Linux ever since I started using Linux and nowadays I resort to use the web interface for Nextcloud notes, but that's not ideal. So I'm going to document every app I tried because I have a pathological need to tell you about everything that I do just like I have a pathological need to tell you everything about our sponsor, OnlyOffice. This video is sponsored by OnlyOffice, the free and open source Office suite that's fully compatible with Microsoft Office documents formats. OnlyOffice has a desktop app available in virtually every packaging format you might want on Linux, but it also runs on Windows, macOS, iOS and Android. The interface is super intuitive, especially if you've been using Microsoft Office as it's really close. And if you want to have your own Office suite in the cloud, you can also run your own only Office server and link it to Nextcloud, OwnCloud, Confluence, SharePoint, Redmine, Jira, and a lot of other services. I personally only use only Office on all my computers running Linux or otherwise, and I also have my own only Office document server linked to my Nextcloud server so I can edit documents online or offline using the desktop editors. Check out the link in the description below and give OnlyOffice a try, you won't regret it. So one of the most recommended apps I happened upon was Joplin. It's open source and cross-platform, you can use it on Linux, Windows, macOS, iOS and Android. The Linux app is distributed as an app image but it's also on Flathub. The app itself is free of charge and handles images, videos, PDFs and audio files inside of your notes. You can also create diagrams and math formulas and they even have a web extension for Chrome or Firefox to save a web page as a note, so you could even use it as a read it later service. Joplin supports notebooks and tags to better organize all your notes and you can sync everything between devices using Dropbox, OneDrive or Joplin Cloud, although this last one is paid for at $1.99 per month for 1GB of storage. Higher price points get you more storage and online collaboration on Notes. Although if you pay for OneDrive or Dropbox, you already have access to Notes and online collaboration in most cases. So I don't really know why a user of one of these services would move to Joplin. Personally, I just wish it could sync with Nextcloud. Writing your notes is done in the Markdown editor, but you have buttons to handle formatting and adding media to your notes. So you don't need to remember Markdown syntax. The preview panel on the right is updated in real time and displays your note in a more legible manner. Joplin is really full featured and nice, but it's unfortunately an Electron app, which means that it's pretty heavy on the RAM side and it doesn't look or feel like a native app. It does support dark mode and can switch automatically between light and dark, but if having a native app is important to you, Joplin won't fit the bill. Now if you want another open source cross-platform note taking app with same capabilities, but without too many features, SimpleNote is for you. They provide basically all packaging formats you'd need and it's also on Flathub. It's another Electron app, but syncing online is free with support for Windows, macOS, Android, iOS and Linux. Now you actually need to create an account to use SimpleNote from what I gathered, but reading their privacy policy, I couldn't see anything that they would collect apart from what they actually need to create the account. It might ruffle some feathers, but I think they're trustworthy. The app itself just handles a list of notes and for each note it offers basic markdown syntax with the ability to link notes to each other, decide if you want to sync them or not, version history and tags. It supports dark mode and light mode although it doesn't detect which to use automatically and it has a preview of the note to look at it without all the markdown symbols. I really wonder why most modern note taking apps result to this dual view, one for writing markdown, one for previewing the results. What happened to what you see is what you get? SimpleNote is more basic than Joplin, without images, audio or video, but for most people it should do the trick. Evernote now has a native client for Linux, but it's in beta. It's distributed as an app image, but I couldn't make it run on my desktop as it crashes at startup, telling me my GPU process isn't usable. Which is weird, because it's an Electron app, so the only thing that should really bother it is the lack of an internet connection. I don't see why the GPU is handled here and other Electron apps just worked fine. On my laptop, it did run though, and it's the full Evernote experience. You get notes and tasks, notebooks and tags, and a very rich what you see is what you get editor. So that's where it was hiding the whole time. This editor includes templates and a gallery of them so you can get started with note taking really fast. 
Evernote is free if you don't upload more than 60 megabytes of data per month, and it becomes paid beyond that. It's also not open source. It's still an interesting organization tool, especially for the paid for plans, as you can connect it to your Google Calendar, if you use that, and basically have notes for each project with associated meetings, tasks, files, and, well, notes. Evernote is a really complete solution, but it will probably be too much if all you want is just to take a few quick text notes. And if you're a heavier user than that, you'll have to get a paid plan, starting at 5 euros per month for 10 gigabytes of monthly upload and calendar sync. It's also another Electron app which won't look like the rest of your desktop, so if that's something that bothers you, Evernote is probably not for you. If you need a native app with a lot of power, QO Notes, despite its terrible name, does a lot. It's open source, of course, and it will look better on KDE than on other desktops, being a cute app. It's designed to integrate with Nextcloud or OwnCloud and prompts you for your Nextcloud Notes folder at startup. It handles full markdown syntax, including code blocks, quotes, images, or links. Its note structure is basically the folder structure of your Nextcloud Notes. It doesn't do notebooks, although you can add tags. Note syncing is handled by the desktop Nextcloud client itself. QO Notes only writes to the individual files that get synced by the client afterwards. QO Notes has a plethora of options to make it look and work like you would like, in true KDE fashion. You can enable simple or ultra complex layouts, show or hide tons of panels, and generally make it your own completely, provided you spend 10 or 15 minutes in the settings to look at all the options to try and stem the tide of buttons and toolbars and panels in true KDE fashion. If I was still on KDE, I would use it to handle all my notes. But on GNOME or Elementor iOS, it just doesn't look well integrated at all, and it really sticks out. If you don't care about system integration, or if you're on KDE though, it's a fantastic option. Zernal Plus Plus, also a terrible name, isn't the prettiest app I could find, but it's also the only one that really handles handwritten notes. Xornal has Linux, Windows, macOS, and Android versions, and they can all open your Xornal notes. The app is open source, and while it looks more like a GTK2 app, it's still one of the best out there if you take your notes by hand with a stylus, which I personally don't do because I have the handwriting of a doctor even though I dropped out of med school. It can handle pressure sensitivity and drawing tablets. It lets you choose paper backgrounds to imitate the support you're trying to emulate. It can annotate on top of PDFs, export to a ton of formats including PDF and PNG, and has a whole lot of tools available. You can draw, highlight, draw shapes, resize and rotate elements. You can stabilize your input when drawing or writing. You have a text tool, an eraser, image support, and audio recording and playback alongside handwritten notes. It strikes me as a very interesting app for students, so you can write your notes while the lecture is going on and record it at the same time, so when you come back home, you can make sure that you didn't miss anything. It's, I think it's really cool. Now, if you want a more modern-looking handwritten note tool, you can also check out RNote. It has a more modern GNOME interface, and while it does a lot less than Xernal, it's also a lot more user-friendly to get started with. It lacks text fields and element rotation, but apart from that, it can do all the basics. Importing images, writing, drawing, adding pages to your notes, it's competent enough. If you want a basic, native open-source app that looks good on GNOME or Elementor iOS, then you have NoteJot. It does lack sync capability, so you won't get your notes on mobile or other devices, but if that's something you don't need, it's pretty nice. You can create notebooks to categorize your notes. It supports search and lets you define colors for each note. The experience is super simple. You get very basic formatting with bold, italic, underlined or strike through and unordered lists, and that's it. It doesn't do tags, markdown or sync, and you won't have complex notes with images, video or audio either. If you just need simple text notes locally without sync, it's a great choice. If what you're looking for in your notes app is more akin to a wiki with interconnected notes that can serve as a knowledge base, then Gnote is probably more suited for you. If you've ever used Tomboy in the past, Gnote is the same principle, but maintained and still developed, which is not the case of Tomboy anymore. Gnote lets you create notebooks to categorize things, and each note supports formatting, like bold, underlined, font sizes, bullet points, and more. If you write the name of another note, a link will automatically be created to that note. And if you later change the name of that note, all links to it are automatically updated. This lets you build a knowledge base, navigating from one note to another, and you can even elect to open each note in its own window. Gnote can sync your notes with a local folder, online folder, or web dev storage, so you can access them on multiple computers, although there is no mobile client. 
It has tons of plugins, like exporting to Getting Things GNOME, Statistics, Hidden Notes, or even a table of contents. So when looking at note-taking apps on Linux, you have plenty of choice. If you're looking for a native, very simple note-taking experience, Gnote or NoteJot will work for you. If you need sync with that, QO Notes will integrate with Nextcloud. For handwritten notes, Xernal++ or RNote will fit the build perfectly. And if you need complete cross-platform markdown notes, you can run to Joplin or Evernote if you can make it work, or Simple Note if all you need is text. Now, of course, people who need to personalize each note with strong templates for script writing, video editing, or stuff like that will probably run to Obsidian or Notion. But these are more complete workspaces than just note-taking apps, so I didn't include them in this video. Now, while we have many choices available, the sad reality is that there is no GTK equivalent to QO notes that would look good on GNOME or Elementary OS, and so I'll stick to the next cloud web interface. What I wish would exist is just NoteJot, but with Nextcloud Sync. That would fit my needs perfectly. This video was made possible by Slimbook, and they're letting you get a 300 euros discount on the Slimbook Titan, their most powerful laptop. This thing is a beast with a 15 inch, 165 hertz, 1440p display with the latest Ryzen CPUs and an Nvidia RTX graphics card. So click the link in the description below if you're interested by that laptop and use the offer code that displays right there at checkout so you can get your 300 euros discount. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And if you didn't, you can dislike and tell me why in the comments. You can also join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!